Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Do you ever have one of those things that's just like a little stupid thing, but it just irritates the <laughs> out of you? Damn it! I feel like that happens to me a lot. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Either way, who gives a All right, today's video, we are gonna be working with the X-Tool S1. I recently got this machine from X-Tool and I freaking love it. Now, if you are interested in the S1, I did make a video, kind of a full on review video, where I went over all of the specs and features of this machine. Machine. And I also talked about the X-Tool Creative Space software, which to me is kind of a game changer. Every freaking time I start a video. Oh, damn it! Freaking concrete shifted. It's not good. I do have some concrete shifting in the shop here, and I'm debating on whether I get someone out here that does the foam jacking where they inject the expanding foam in there to raise it or the actual mud jacking where they, where they pump concrete in there to raise it. If anyone has any experience with the expanding foam to raise concrete, let me know in the comments, I'm interested. So what we're gonna be doing with the S1 is some Christmas gifts. Now this video is going to be published right after Christmas, but this will be good for birthdays, Christmas, personalized gifts, weddings, whatever the hell you got going on. But the reason I'm posting it after Christmas is because some of these are Christmas gifts to my family and I don't want them seeing this video before I give them the gift, even though I really don't care. Okay, so we're going to be engraving on some leather, which I don't know why, but I've just on a leather kick lately. And you can purchase these little 12 by 12 sheets or 12 by 24 sheets of leather off of Amazon. I'm sure there's a better place to source it. The amount of leather engraving that I'm doing, I just get it on Amazon and I will leave links for this down in the description. We're also going to be trying out the rotary tool with this glass mug. I've never etched on glass before, so I'm either going to destroy this thing or it's gonna turn out cool, we'll see. And I have a DeWalt hatchet. It's black, it's got a coating on it. And this is a gift for my father-in-law. There's a little bit of an underlying joke here. Uh, we were recently at one of my kids' basketball games and the other team's mascot was the Hatchets. And he seemed to think that that was inappropriate. Don't get me started with that whole thing. I argued with him that a hatchet is not a weapon. A hatchet is a tool. You buy it in the tool section at Home Depot. Anything can become a weapon. Often, glass mugs are used as weapons, but they're not considered a weapon. I think you get my point. So I'm gonna do a little engraving on this hatchet tool and I'm going to personalize it. I'm going to put his nickname on there and some other crap. He might use it on me. <laughs> and for the leather, you might remember, I made a little uh, test plate here on the leather with different power and speed settings. So this is gonna be really handy when I start engraving on this leather. I can pick the power and speed setting and get the perfect engraving. All right, enough BS, let's get started. All right, the very first engraving we're gonna do is on a piece of this black leather here. I'm not sure how the engraving's gonna turn out on this, being that it's a darker material, but we'll give it a whirl. What we're gonna make on that leather is a coaster. Pretty easy little gift idea. I'm just gonna personalize it for what the family or friend is into. Pretty commonly used for gift ideas, but let's check out the design. All right, so right here, you can see I've got a Harley Davidson logo that um, I'm gonna use for one of the coasters, but I'm not gonna use right now. So now that I'm clicked on it, I'm going to hit ignore instead of output. That way it doesn't try to engrave that. What I want to engrave is this Jeep coaster right here. So basically what I did was I just hit image. I found an image on the internet. I just screenshotted that image, saved it on my desktop. And then when you click image up in that top left corner, you can insert it onto your platform here. It's super easy. Uh, on this image, I've got it set to engrave. That's why it's all filled in black. And then on this layer, the exterior border, I've got my dimensions set right here, 95 millimeters by 95 millimeters, which is roughly like three and three quarter inches. And then I have my corner radius right here, so I was able to round those corners a little bit. And I have this layer set to cut. And then I've got the name in here. You could pick all the different uh, font styles that you want. And I have that one set to engrave as well. So now I'm going to use my little test grid right here to enter in all of my cut settings and engrave settings. And then we'll go ahead and cut this out, see what it looks like, and then we can go from there. All right, as far as setting up the leather for our engraving, it's super easy. The very first step we're gonna do is just get this laser somewhere out in the middle and we're gonna get our distance for the Z axis. Basically, we want a certain distance 
And this thing has an auto focus option, which is awesome. It's this little thing right on the side here. It'll pop down, get our distance measurement, and then that'll program it into the computer settings. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the distance. See it popped out. It's gonna touch on the material, then it's gonna go back and reset itself. So now we have the perfect cut gap semis. So now we have the perfect gap for that laser head and the material so it cuts that engraving nice and crisp. Now, this is my favorite feature about the X-Tool S1 and probably some of their other ones as well. The twin point positioning system. I mentioned this in my last video. It's freaking awesome. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to go on the Creative Space software and hit start marking. So we'll click start marking. We're going to be engraving on a rectangle. Start marking. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to place these crosshairs, basically showing where this material is placed. Now over here, it's kind of overhanging. So I'm just going to pick a point up here in this upper left corner, and I'm going to hit the button on the bottom right corner of the machine, which is right down here, not in the view, right there. And then now we're going to move it to the very bottom right corner. And I'm going to hit that button again. And now no matter where this is placed, the Creative Space software and the X-Tool S1 know exactly where the laser head is on this material at all points. Then we're going to hit end marking, done. And you can see on the screen now, it shows those exact points where I placed uh, on that twin point marking system. So now we're gonna highlight what we want to engrave. We're gonna move it down nice and tight into that bottom right corner. And we're gonna hit process and that is what it's going to cut out and then all we have to do is hit start and we're good to go so i'm going to set up my exhaust and get that thing sucking air out of the building here otherwise we're ready to go all we have to do is hit start and hit the button right here that twin point positioning system makes it so easy to lay out your engraving on a piece of material very accurate but we're going to continue to use that same process as we engrave on some of the other objects Let's check that out. That actually looks pretty badass. That actually turned out really good on that black leather. I was kind of unsure as how it would look, but man, that looks awesome. I think I might do them all on the black leather. Okay, now we've done enough leather. Let's try out the rotary tool with this glass mug. I've never etched on glass before and I have not used the rotary tool before. So let's see what that's all about. Okay, here is the X-Tool rotary tool is all that crap it's actually a very clean and sleek design on this thing it's got like kind of like a silicone rubber type of rollers here then it comes with this other piece in case you have an oddly shaped cylinder you can use this piece to kind of hold it and support it so it engraves level and evenly straight whatever i don't know so we're going to set that in here for now now i've never used the rotary tool for the x tool before no it's a tool a lot right there but i will say my experience with rotary tools using light burn kind of a pain in the ass there's a lot of settings that you have to use because Lightburn is somewhat of a universal software for all kinds of different lasers. It makes it a little bit more complicated unless you're like an expert with laser engravers and rotary tools. The X-Tool Creative Space software, being that it's designed specifically around X-Tool, it recognizes the rotary tool for X-Tool. Tool? Tool? It does all the thinking for you. So I already know this is gonna be easy to set it up, but I'm literally figuring it out as we speak. In the kit, they give you a couple of Allen tools, little Allen screwdrivers. I don't know where we're gonna need them, but just in case. And they give you three different style patch cords. I'm guessing depending on what style X tool you have, depends on what cord to use. So we're gonna figure out what cord we need right now. And the rotary tool is gonna plug right in this very front right corner, kind of on the opposite side of this button right here. Looks like this is our guy right here. All right, so we're gonna plug our X tool rotary tool in it's called the, the hell is it called? I think it's called the RA2. The X tool RA2, that's what I meant to say. All right, so we're plugged into the stepper motor here and then we're just gonna plug it into that front port. So let me get this kind of figured out and then we'll get back to, you know. Okay, as I suspected, the X tool set up for the rotary tool, it's pretty cut and dry. So we're just going to set this in here and this thing plugs in. Now, here's the part. This mug has a handle on it. 
and I don't know how that's going to work. It also has a couple of little notches on that, so I don't know how that's going to work either. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe I will use this. All right, update. The rotary tool, the RA2, is not going to work with this mug. I tried it multiple different ways because of the handle and there's actually some ridges in the glass and there's four of them evenly divided around the circumference of this thing. Every time it spun, it would hit one of those ridges or the handle and it would bump it off center. So it's just not gonna work. But I have one more thing I'm gonna try, and this is a really cool feature that the S1 has that I have not yet talked about. And what it does is it can actually map out a curved surface with the autofocus probe. So I'll try to give you a brief overview of what that is, but maybe we'll go into that a little bit further on another video. All right, so I have the mug sitting in there on the rotary tool, even though we're not using the rotary tool, you can see that the cord is not plugged in. I'm literally just using that to hold the cup in place. Now I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. All right, so instead of engraving on a cylindrical surface, cylinder, whatever, that's what they call it here, we're gonna come up here to where it says laser flat. Click on that, we're gonna go to curve process and we're gonna go to measure, curve measure. Okay, so now what we need to do is kind of like the twin point positioning, mark opposite corners so it knows what area that it's going to go ahead and take a bunch of reference marks. All right, now we're gonna go over to this bottom right side right here, and we'll mark that. Ah. Hopefully it doesn't do the same thing it did again. We're gonna hit mark. Oh, you Well, I don't think this is gonna work either. All right, well, that confirms it. this mug. We're not going to engrave on it today. This was a fail. No fault to the X-Tool, it's just it's a shitty shape. X-Tool does have another option, which is their chuck mount. That would probably work best for this because I can go ahead and grab it right on the backside and it would spin it freely where the handle and those notches wouldn't make a difference. So on to the next thing. But we are going to talk about that feature in another video. It's actually pretty damn cool. Well, it looks like Keystone Girl's not getting anything for Christmas. All right, looks like we're not using the rotary tool today either. Put that back. All right, next on the list, we're gonna do the ax. Now the ax, I'm pretty confident in. Don't think we're gonna have any issues with this, so let's get it set up. All right, we're gonna lift this platform up a little higher. And we're going to set the ax in there. I don't think I need to do much. Eh, I might shim it. Got some scrap leather that I kept to use for shims. Now I'm gonna go ahead and square it up. Now I want to engrave right in this little tiny space right here. Now with this twin point positioning system, it makes this super easy. So we're gonna go up to the top left corner right there and we'll go ahead and mark that. We're gonna go to the bottom right corner right there. We're gonna mark that. And then we're gonna hit end marking, done. And you can see that little space right there is right where I want to put this is a tool right in that little space. And when I hit the engrave button, it's gonna put that lettering in the perfect spot. Just finished up the last of the leather coasters. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the way they all turned out. So these all came out really cool. They're all customized for each one of my family and friends. I've got a nice fire department one right here. I've got a couple of Jeep coasters. And keep in mind, I'm not selling these things, so I'm using logos and other trademarked brands, but I'm not selling these things. These are just gifts, so you can kind of get away with that. Again, with the Harley Davidson, which, Everyone uses this logo, but again, I'm not selling them, so 
Uh, my dad's got a Harley and a Jeep, so these are for my dad and my stepmom. And uh, my niece is really big into scary movies, so this is something that she's gonna like. And my stepsister coaches the cheer team. My sister, big into The Sims. I remember playing that when I was younger. She's still hooked on it. My older sister is a registered nurse, so this is a nice fit for her. It's got a lot of really clean detail. And my brother-in-law is a UPS employee, so this is kind of cool. Nice package. Oh yeah. And you can see the difference between these two UPS ones. This one I cleaned all the charring out, and this one I didn't yet. And this one is for my mom. She's very big into crocheting, so got a nice little yarn ball shaped like a heart. Very touching. So overall, I'm really happy with the way those turned out. The X-Tool did an amazing job, very clean, very precise. And with that twin point positioning, it's super easy to place your engravings exactly where you want them on the material. And even though it's just a stupid leather coaster, I think that those personalized gifts are gonna mean a lot to my family and friends. And you could even take objects that you buy and customize them with the laser as well, which is really cool. Now, hopefully they like all of their personalized gifts. They don't. I'll be honest, I, I really don't give a Unfortunately, the glass didn't work out this time, but I'm going to be making another video in the near future. We're going to uh, actually do some engraving on glass. We're gonna be using the rotary tool and we're gonna be using the feature on the X-Tool where it's able to identify uh, any kind of a curvature on a certain piece of material. And basically it maps it out with a bunch of reference points. So we'll be testing out that feature as well in another video. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Impressive piece of shit. mug. Well, the camera probably just changed a little bit because I just totally trashed my good camera. I was moving the tripod, it fell on the ground and landed right on the lens and it jammed it in there crooked. So the lens is totally And now I'm gonna shoot another video on the Langmuir plasma table with my action camera. And I'm pissed.